recording in progress and i think you all know what that means it is i guess technically the second uh podcast of the off season but the first one that we are joined by none other than matt sporsky for i feel like the gazillionth time but you got to get the good times rolling matt how you doing buddy fantastic thanks for having me on yet again i'm sure your listeners are uh sick of hearing from me at this yeah point, they're, but... they're like oh god this idiot again <laughs> not, not this up again <laughs> But uh, yeah, so this is the, I don't know if this is the off season podcast, you know, cause there's, there's a lot to, lot to go over a lot of moves that's happening uh, and not only in baseball, but, but for the Phillies as well, but you know, there's a few things to go over. Uh, we're basically going to be talking about uh, some, some players, uh, I guess, worst players, best players. Uh, there's some news that happened with, uh, with Kevin Long, uh, good news. Uh, and also with the coaching staff, and then we're briefly just going to go over some uh, some free agent predictions for for the Phils. See see where they go. So Matt, are you ready to get crazy? Are you ready to get wild? I'm ready to go. Let's rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, as everybody knows, the Phillies went through a lot of ups and downs this year. You know, from the JG era. I won't even say his name. From you know where to Bradley Zimmer starting in center field <laughs> to, to Adubo Herrera also starting in center field, but there are so basically I kind of want to talk about who to me was kind of the the player of the year. So so I have it right here on my phone. I have player of the year, pitcher of the year, worst pitcher, worst hitter, and then we can kind of go into you know other other random players that that started. So for me, my MVP this year. Has to be JT Real Muto. Has to be JT Real Muto. You know, what he did, you know, I, I guess the whole vaccination thing, really, he took to heart and said, uh, you know what, I'm just going to come back and be honestly one of the best hitters in baseball on top of being the best defensive catcher. Uh, and he really was the the heartbeat of this team with Harper out. And, you know, I think uh, for a lot of Phillies fans that that he is a lot of the a lot of the fans MVP. Uh, Matt, what do you what do you think? I would have to agree with Romuto definitely for sure. But I mean, you look at a guy that won a gold glove, uh, arguably one of the most important positions on the field, a catcher with not only calling the games for pitchers, but also controlling the run game. Like nobody runs on Romuto. And if they are dumb enough to, he usually throws them out. And then also you look at what, like you said, what he did once Harper went down, uh, it was right around that, uh, that trip, that series, that quick series in Toronto, where he really started to turn around. Uh, and really carried the offense through the back half of the year, hit over 300. Uh, you know, at the time Harper went down, he had like six homers in the end of June, and he finished with 20-something. So, um, and then obviously what he did in the playoffs, he was consistently getting on base. Uh, he had that inside the park homer. Then that he had the like game-winning it. homer in game one of the World Series. So you really can't uh, underestimate everything that he did. And also on top of all that, he caught the most innings of any player in, uh, in Major League Baseball this year. By far. By, by far, far, by a lot. Um, so you really can't underestimate what he'd done. This is not to under undersell Kyle Schwarber or anybody else. You know, Schwarber obviously hit uh, between the playoffs and regular season, hit 52 homers this year, uh, and you can't undersell that. But, uh, you know, obviously his defense in left field is not the best. No. So, Dude, uh, it is every, so funny watching him track down a ball. He's like a little tank engine. It's just, really bad. It's really trying, bad. Try, even when he was on the Cubs and I would be watching Cubs games, I'd be like, he's not a left fielder. Like, come oh, on, you're messing yeah. with me right now. But if you're hitting 52 homers a year, you can play whatever the hell position you want. Exactly. Um, but yeah, like you said, I think I think three people kind of stick out to me as as MVPs for for the seasons. JT, Kyle Schwarber, and honestly, Aaron Nola really sticks out. And I know everybody has a sour taste in their mouth after what he did in the World Series. And honestly, he was kind of cooked in the World Series. You could tell, like he wasn't spotting his fastball. He was relying. He was actually relying a lot on that fastball. And and if fastball is not there, his his the rest of his off speed stuff is not going to play off. But you know, we wouldn't have gone to the World Series without Aaron Nola, which is a sentence that I never, ever thought I was going to say. But, you know, you got to look at him and and what he was able to do, and especially when, when Wheeler went down. You know, you could point to a lot of guys stepping up. And honestly, you know, Bailey Falter stepped up a lot. Like, he had a lot of quality starts when Wheeler was out, but Nola really hunkered down that uh, that rotation. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. No, I mean, Noel is just the guy you could expect to get the ball every fifth day. And that's been like his thing that throughout his entire career mm-hmm. is you could just expect him to get the fifth ball, get the ball every fifth day, throw probably five, six innings, struck, strike out at least six batters mm-hmm. and, you know, hopefully not implode. Mm-hmm. Um, and he didn't and he really minimized the home run ball this year, which was a big, uh, big thing of in it's the O2, the O2 home run every yeah. single year. Exactly. He so he really it. minimized that and he was yeah. able to. Uh, have one of the best strikeout to walk ratios in the entire league. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that's a fair assessment. Yeah, and this is a perfect uh, little segue because my pitcher of the year is the aforementioned Aaron Nola. I like I said, this team doesn't get to where this team didn't get to where they were without Aaron Nola. He stepped up massive. Obviously, everyone expects him to be like the guy we saw in 2018. And honestly, that that was kind of an anomaly. That was utter dominance of what we saw in 2018. I don't think we're ever going to see that again, realistically speaking. I think the Nola we saw this year is the Aaron Nola that's, you know, exactly what you're going to get. Like you said, he's going to take the ball every fifth day. He's going to give you five, six, seven solid innings, uh, minimize the long ball. The walks weren't an issue for him. The strikeouts numbers were fantastic. And like I said, he is not, the Phillies aren't there without him, but Matt, who did you have for, for pitcher of the year? So I'm going to zig while everybody else is zagging. You probably expected me to go to the starter here. Uh, you obviously could go with Noel, but I'm going to go with Jose Alvarado. Mm-hmm. Uh, just how huge he was. You know, at the beginning of the year, he was awful. Had his, his ERA was over seven. Uh, he got sent down to the minors, uh, and they talked about it at nausea in the playoffs pretty much every time he came in, that he was sent down to the minors, came back. Um, but he, like, he was looking really, really bad. And, you know, like, he was – pretty much our main lefty in the bullpen so it really killed the Phillies for a while but when he came back and added that cutter and really mastered it he was untouchable down the stretch and I know um in the World Series he really struggled but you know he's another guy that you point to a lot like Nola where they're not even in that situation without Jose Alvarado uh and you know for a bullpen that has lacked so much in the past and has been you know the laughing stock of Major League Baseball over the last couple of years um he and Sir Anthony Dominguez were a major reason why the bullpen was uh, fortified throughout the playoffs and through the end of the regular season. Uh, And I think, you know, just because of how remarkably consistent Alvarado was, I think that can't be understated. Yeah. I mean, you, you said it perfectly. Uh, Like, you know, how I said with, with Nola, the same can be said about Alvarado. The Phillies aren't in that position uh, without him and what he was able to do. And I just think it's hilarious. Somebody in AAA was just swatching. He says, dude, you should like throw a cutter. And then he just did. And then he was the best, dare I say, he was the best reliever in baseball. Not only the best lefty, he was the best reliever. Nobody was touching that guy until Jordan Alvarez did, but we don't need to go there. Um, <clears throat> now we get to, you know, obviously, you know, you can point to a lot of things for for positivity, but now we got to get to the worst of the worst, which I, I argue is funnier. So I had a tie for worst pitcher. Uh, actually, I have a three-way tie. I just thought of this person. <laughs> I have a three-way time. Can you guess what three pitchers I'm about to say? Uh, if I were to guess, just knowing you, Kyle Gibson's one of them. Um, he is not one of them. He's not? All right, perfect, because he's, he's mine. Uh, <laughs> uh, Brad Hand? That is one of them, yes. Okay. Uh, is another reliever? It's all three are relievers. Okay, Brogdon? No. Uh, Familia? Yes. Okay. Um... Oh, the third reliever. I will say this guy was not on the Phillies for very long. Oh, God. Uh, was he like somebody who came up in like May and was terrible? I mean, he was on the team. He looked pretty good and then had two awful outings that ended his Phillies career. Oh, man. I'm blanking. Who is it? James Norwood. Is oh, yeah. also, uh, okay, yeah, the seven to one game. Well, I'll never forgive you for that, James Norwood. You're a piece of garbage, and I'll never forgive you for that. <laughs> but those three, Brad Hand, Jerice Familia, and James Norwood are taking my cake for worst pitchers uh, that I saw this year. And honestly, I'd rather see Garrett Stubbs out on the mound. By the way, <laughs> Garrett Stubbs, if you're available, I'd love to have you on the Dotnet Phillies podcast. Just throwing it out there. Hey, anyway. man, get Garrett Stubbs on the pod, man. Yeah, dude, let's make it happen. That's it. Um, but yeah, uh, I I can agree with all those. Brad Hand is like the most misleading ERA in all mm-hmm. of baseball. Uh, nothing he loves more than inheriting runners and giving up runners mm-hmm. that weren't his. Yep. Uh, and letting them score. Um, Familia, you don't even. You just. Yeah, and it's just familiar. Every like, Philly fan knows. 
Yeah, I mean, Familia was just a train wreck from the moment he signed the contract. That Dude, imagine him. picking him over Hector Neris. Just I mean, and, for the, for, and we gave Familia more money than what Neris got from Houston, but mm-hmm. that's besides that's Anyway. Um, but my, my worst pitch of the year is Kyle Gibson. Um, he was pretty good at the beginning of the year. I would say before. September Kyle Gibson. We got to like, preface because he was pretty September solid. Kyle Gibson was an absolute train wreck. Like it yeah. is a miracle. He yeah. didn't kill this team down the stretch. Yeah. Um, despite his best efforts, <laughs> he, he was awful. Like, and yeah. it felt like the problem with Kyle Gibson for me, like, wasn't that he was so bad. It just felt like that he was like Aaron Nola getting the ball every fifth day. Yeah. And it was like, he was remarkably consistent at going out there having a pretty good first inning and then just giving up four runs. Yeah. I mean, almost immediately with like it, a flip of a switch. And it came out of Noah. He would get two, two outs in an inning and then all of a sudden he would give up six straight base runners. Dude, like, that national so start, happened. that national start. I yeah. will never forget. He give gets two outs on five pitches and the inning ends and it's six, nothing nationals. Like, oh dude, God. how do you do that? Yeah. But yeah, I would say, I mean, the thing is with Kyle Gibson, it's like, you could tell he was toasting and that spoke volume when Thompson used him what twice in the playoffs yeah when uh, you know he would much rather see a bullpen game than to throw kyle gibson out for a start and i think after he started 30 games in the regular season yeah and i think kyle gibson probably told thompson that like my arm is like absolutely toast like if you're gonna use me use me for like an inning or two like i and i I, listen, if that did happen, you know, I, I made up that scenario, obviously. But if Kyle Gibson went to Thompson and was like, don't use me, Kyle Gibson, you're okay in my book, buddy. Yeah. All he and wanted was a ring. And by all accounts, he's a great guy. I think. He oh, was, I love him. He was, he was the, the Phillies Clemente Award yeah, guy. Right? Yeah, like, yeah, I like him as a guy. Like, yeah. I have no issue with him as a guy. Him as a pitcher, I'm glad I never have to sit through 32 <laughs> Kyle Gibson starts ever again in my entire life. I mean, it's... There's no way he gets another contract, right? Like he maybe he'll get like a minor no, league will. deal somewhere. He, no, he will because if you take out if you take out his September, I mean he had like a high four ERA. Like somebody's gonna take that. Like not a team like the Orioles. I would say the Orioles, but the Orioles are starting to turn it around. I would say let's see, Kyle Gibson. I can maybe see like him going Cubs or something. I would say Cubs or maybe like I, I feel like the Brewers for some reason yeah. will sign Kyle Gibson. Mm. I don't know why. Yeah, but weird. but. Okay, I have also three hitters in my worst hitter. <laughs> okay. I'm... You want me to guess those two? <clears throat> By all means, if you'd like to. All right. Uh, is Oduble one of them? Oduble is not one of them. All right. Uh, is Zimmer one of them? You brought Zim- up Zimmer. Zimmer. <laughs> Bradley Zimmer is one of them. Yes. He was a train wreck. Yes. Um, is Castellanos one of them? He is not, actually, because Castellanos actually would put like wood on the ball, unlike yeah. these two players. <laughs> okay. Um, are they failed center fielders? No, no, is no. Is Mickey Moniak one of them? Mickey Moniak is not one of them. I, I wouldn't consider Mickey playing this year. He played like two games and then got sent down and then traded. So bad, man. Um, I hope the best for Mickey. Yeah. Mickey, come on the pub. Anyway. <laughs> so. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm blanking on the other Okay, two. so. Oh, Didi. Didi, Didi yep. Yeah, Didi is bad. one of them. The other yeah. one is, is, is Jairo Munoz. <laughs> I just. Despised him in the batter's box. He had like his first like three at bats. He was like three for three, like a double and two home runs. That was it. That was yeah. it. And, 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 and Joe Girardi had. Oh God, I said his name. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> JG had the absolute stones to like start him over Bryson Stott. Like, dude, what are we doing here? I hated watching that guy. Can I get? A, can I guess who your player is? Yeah. Is it Nick Cassianos? Of course it is. Cass yeah, is like. Is. He has been like the thorn in my side all year. And I like you look at his numbers and they're not that terrible, like 265 with like 13 homers. That's like, not the like, guy you sign, though. Yeah, it's not a guy that you're paying $20 million a year to. Yeah. And it's not a guy that's supposed to hit fourth in your lineup coming off a year where he hit 309 and 34 mm-hmm. homers and 30 doubles. He still had 30 doubles this year. Yeah. But it just felt like, like where were they? When did yeah. they happen? Because mm-hmm. I don't remember. It was all in garbage time, it, dude. Like, that's exactly what it was. It felt like he was stat padding all the time. Because every time he came up in a clutch situation, it Strike was like out ground ball pitch. to the left side it was... every <laughs> single time. There was, was two outcomes. At pitches. He, was, uh, he was the most infuriating at bat. All year consistently. There was two outcomes in a Nick Castellanos runner in scoring position. It was either a weak ground ball at the left side on the first pitch or a three pitch strikeout. There was yeah. no in between. There was no in between. But was it you that said like his first year in Cincy he was awful like this, and then Correct. his which second why, year, which is why I'm not expecting him exactly for next year to be the worst. Exactly. I more from next year, and it yeah. happens a lot where 
uh, a free agent goes somewhere for one year and they're not really comfortable, totally comfortable. Even with Harper's team. first year exactly. wasn't great. No, I mean, he had 35 bombs, but I mean, yeah, like, he had 260 and like, uh, like again, like it's not horrible numbers by any means, no. but it's not up to Harper standards. And he struck out yeah. way too much. Mm-hmm. And like the first four months of the year, he was hitting like 220. And uh, now, like, you know, he is the one of the best hitters on the planet, like yeah. the past three seasons. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So he's he's really turned it around. And I'm expecting kind of the same thing from Cassianos, yeah. although I hope I never see him play right field again, despite how good he was in the playoffs. I mean, I think, uh, you know, it, it is all contingent upon, and that kind of brings up a next point about uh, about Harper. Um, we're kind of transitioning to, to offseason stuff now. Our awards are over. So congratulations, Phillies. Award season's over. Um, so the first point I kind of want to touch on is uh, the Harper elbow situation. Um, they're looking into the last I saw was a lighter version of Tommy John where he's mm-hmm. not out for a year. Um, if you're the Phillies, I hope my hope is not another Sir Anthony situation where it's the will they won't they will they won't they and then he misses two years. Um, you know, I it's it's tough to say, you know, I would I wouldn't mind if he was just the DH again, mm-hmm. or do you just get the surgery and the beginning of the season is the beginning of the season, and then he'll be back later. What, what are your thoughts on that? Well, here's the thing with Tommy John. Uh, with hitters, obviously, it's different. Like Otani got Tommy John a couple years ago, and by and he he got the surgery in like October and was back by May in in the yeah. lineup. He wasn't pitching, obviously, but he was yeah. DHing, uh, and he could still do that. And Harper can still do that, much like he did this year. Mm-hmm. Um, but he'd probably come back late May or early June. I mean, now, that power is going to be zapped, right? And one of the options that I think hopefully is an option is what happened to Reese Hoskins a couple of years ago where he had that elbow surgery mm-hmm. and he had it over the off season. And he was ready to go for spring training. Yeah. Um, and I think if that's an option um, for Harper, I think he should undeniably take it because yeah. you can't keep playing through pain. And clearly, mm-hmm. um, you know, letting it here heal naturally is not working. Yeah. Um, and I would like to see him in the field at some point, because again, I cannot stand Nick Castellanos and Kyle Schwarber being no. corner outfielders. Like so, I can deal with one of them at a time, yeah. uh, both well, watching the entire both year. Brutal. I can't do it. I can't. That was brutal. To watch. So, and people forget Harper has one of the better arms in right field. Bryce Harper's a major. damn good fielder out there. Yeah. Like everybody's I mean, like, not going to oh, win any gold gloves yeah. or be, you know, I don't know. Juan Soto was a finalist. Well, so. okay. That's a good point. <laughs> But uh, like metrically, he's not going to grade out well, but he does have a great mm-hmm. arm and he does consistently uh, end up in the top of the league in terms of outfield assists. So mm-hmm. he's definitely an upgrade up there. Yeah. Um, and I really want to get as much out of right field as I can from Bryce Harper. So if that means getting a Tommy John surgery, and maybe missing the first couple months of the year, then so, so be it. Yeah, um, but I agree. I really, obviously, I really don't want that to happen. But if mm-hmm. that's the only scenario where his elbow gets fixed, then I'd say go for it. Yeah, I agree. I think... Um... It's kind of like almost damned if you do, damned if you don't. Like I like I said, I hope it's not another will they won't they situation. And I hope, you know, they they do the best thing. And I think Harper knows kind of like if he has to miss like the first two months of the season, so be it. Like mm-hmm. and especially we know this team can win without him. Right. Uh, we saw that all last year. So I, I think that was said perfectly by you. And I think that um <clears throat> I, I couldn't agree more, buddy. Um, and now uh, tra- uh, we're transitioning again uh, because I'm awful at, at transitioning without just saying transition. Um, so a couple things happened. Uh, the Phillies will announce, I believe it was yesterday, the day before, that they are retaining their entire coaching staff for the for next season. Um, and on top of that, Kevin Long got a two year extension, which I think is arguably so far the biggest move of the off season. Uh, what are you? What are your thoughts going into that? It's huge for a multitude of reasons. Obviously, it's a great relationship seemingly with everybody in that clubhouse. Mm -hmm. Uh, With Schwarber, that his relationship with him has been well noted. Mm -hmm. Uh, Castellanos really seems to like him. Bryce Harper really seems to like him. Uh, And Rob Thompson really seems to trust him. And not to be lost on anything, and I'm sure we'll segue into this eventually, but Mm -hmm. Trey Turner, who's a free agent right now and has been linked to the Phillies, is a big fan of Kevin Long's. And Kevin Long feels the same way about Turner. So I think that's kind of a... A bit. There you go. You can see Trey Turner right there. Yeah, reading each other's minds. So, yeah. uh, I, I think that's not something that can go understated or unnoticed. Yes, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring that up. So, mm-hmm. I think overall, I think Kevin Long being here is a is a great thing, and um, you know, 
all this means essentially is that he's not going to get a managerial job this year. Yeah. Uh, hopefully he doesn't because he's he seems to have a great impact on all the hitters. I mean, look at the season Alec Bohm had. Mm-hmm. Uh, look at the season that Gene Segura had. Even the Bryson Stott missed, turnaround. Bryson Stott when he when he actually started getting plate appearances. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Edmundo Sosa came over mm-hmm. from St. Louis where he was in the Bucks Brandon up. Marsh. And came over and started hitting well. Brandon Marsh started hitting well. Matt Veerling kind of figured it out somewhat. Uh, sometimes. And, sometimes. You know, <laughs> we think, love you, Car Shield. Come on, the I, pod. I, th- I think that Kevin Long just has the perfect personality for this clubhouse. Yeah. So him being around for two more years is great news. Yeah, and I think um, – and retaining everybody is, is huge. You know, I I loved the Caleb Cotham hiring as soon as they did it. I thought that was an excellent move, and it's paid dividends. Like, I feel like relievers and, and pitchers have gotten uh, – is that allowed? Like, pitchers are getting better when they get here? Is that allowed? Not not in Philadelphia. Not in Philadelphia, yeah, but – This the exception. Yeah, they – I mean, everybody – I just I love that for clubhouse morale for for camaraderie like everybody knows everybody there's no new faces and obviously you know if there's a new guy they're not going to like turn their back to him obviously no I think having that sameness that similarity that same goal that same drive that all of these these coaches and players are going to have is is huge and, and then, going off of that too with yeah. with the new guys I mean you saw two guys that came in over the offseason the two big fish in the in the free agency was Schwarber and Castellanos and they were kind of the leaders of the clubhouse yep. especially with uh, Harper going down and missing two months they kind of mm-hmm. use that opportunity to kind of really take over the clubhouse and be yep. like the leaders of the clubhouse and I know Castellanos like we are well noted uh did not have a good year this year at the mm-hmm. plate but as a teammate, it seems like everybody loves him. Yeah, so, and you got to look at the Alec Bohm thing too. He yeah. said, like when when Alec Bohm said, "I I effing hate this place." Nick Castellanos was the first one to go over to him and and talk to him, and he said, and and I think that's a really really great point. Is like these guys came in, uh, you know this this core has been together for a few years at this point, and and really they they kind of swept the Phillies off their feet almost, mm-hmm. and and the city fell in love with them. I mean, Nick Castellanos is has a little work to do, but uh, Kyle Schwarber is beloved in Philadelphia, and I honestly thought I forgot that this was his first season in Philadelphia. Yeah. Like that's so just feels the, like he's been here forever. Exactly. That's the type of impact that that winning players have. And, and I'm glad he's ours. And uh, speaking of winning players and winning managers, see, I could transition. Um, how do you feel about Rob Thompson not being a finalist for manager of the year? Well, it's BS. We all know it's BS. Uh, and I understand that it's a regular season re- award, but even still. You How does a guy that. that turned around the ship like that even got getting this team to the playoffs mm-hmm. is an accomplishment enough for him to be at least a finalist? I mean, it was mm-hmm. um, it was Snicker manager, managers, yeah. and who was the third one? The St. Louis. It was manager? no, it was Brian Snicker. Uh, oh, Dave Roberts. Dave Please. Roberts and yeah. Buck Showalter. Dave Roberts sucks. At, he is the one of the worst managers in baseball. Like I said. You and I could manage that Dodgers team, and I guarantee we would win the World Series our first season there. Yeah. We would influence them. Yeah, I mean, Dave Roberts, like, he gets handed a brand new, like, he gets handed a brand new car over here, and it's like, okay, uh, drive to the corner. And that, like, that's all he has to do. Like, he literally just has to make sure it doesn't crash. And And, no, it crashes when the NLDS hits. That's when it crashes. Yeah, once they get to the playoffs, they ask him to do a little bit more and be a little bit more assertive and be, you know, this guy that controls a locker room and controls Mm -hmm. the situation. And he just doesn't. And he doesn't. He doesn't. No. I mean, the, I'm not, I mean, of all of them, you know, Buck Showalter, like, dude, you have the biggest payroll in baseball, like, shocking that your team won 100 games, like, congratulations. I think the only one that really deserves it is Brian Snicker. Like, Brian Snicker is one of the best managers in baseball. Another turnaround yet again. Exactly. Another turnaround. A slow start for the Braves. He had all these young guys and played them well and let them play. Shocking. When you play young players, they succeed. Um and I think of all the guys, you know, if Brian Snicker wins, I, I won't be upset because I think he deserves it much more than than Dave Roberts or, or Buck Walter. And you know it's going to be Buck Walter. Yeah, you it's, know. It's happening, like, tonight, I think at 8. Yeah. You know it's going to be Buck Walter. Absolutely. Like, uh, imagine, I, like, oh, God. It, it's just because the Mets underachieved for so long, and now mm-hmm. the Buck Walter is there, and now that they have Max Scherz, and now they did all this extra things, like now it's like, oh, Buck Walter is the reason. Like, no, dude, they just finally mm-hmm. performed. They, to the they finally have a competent owner. And then they lost in the wild card. And then they lose in the wild card to the at San Diego home. Padres at home, who the Phillies, by the way, beat to get into the World Series, but I thought the Phillies could beat good teams anyway. <laughs> um, any hoosers, uh, now we get to the last little bit. The free agency bonanza, dare I say. So 
I have a couple things. I have five notes, five things. I said at the top of that list is Trey Turner. Mm -hmm. I also said, question mark, Carlos Rodon. Mm -hmm. I think we'll get into that. I said, if not Carlos Rodon, would you trade for an ace? You know, we all know Dombrowski's track, his, his track record. Um, I also wrote down, I would sign one of Zach Eflin or Noah Syndergaard to mm. be in that bullpen role, uh, uh, as well as some other relief options. But we'll get started with the big elephant in the room, the aforementioned Trey Turner. Trey Turner basically is a Philly at this point. He's just got to sign the dotted line. Uh, I will, and I think we we even discussed this that if Trey Turner isn't starting shortstop for the Phillies, I honestly will be shocked. Like this fit, I don't think is is any more perfect than it is in Philly. What do you think? I mean, it's been well noted that he wants to come back to the East Coast after being at DC for so long. Uh, he's great friends with Harper. Had a good relationship with Kyle Schwarber with the half a season they were there together. Um, I just think that, you know, the relationship and the connections cannot be undersold, cannot be understated. And it seems like everybody, every article that I've read where, you know, people are predicting where Trey Turner is going to end up, it's going it, to, like, everybody's picking the Phillies. Mm -hmm. So it just feels like it's a foregone conclusion at this point. And I don't care about the money. I don't mm -hmm. care about the length of years. Give them what I want. It's like an eight-year, $300 million. I really do not care because, first of all, it's not my money. Second of all, <laughs> uh, John Middleton's money, he's a billionaire. Billionaire's money do, does not count. It's not real. It sure. doesn't matter. Uh -huh. um, and they're already over the luxury tax threshold anyway. Yep. So what does it matter? Especially mm -hmm. when you were a couple wins away from a world freaking championship. And one of the most glaring holes in this team was a leadoff hitter who can hit for contact have speed and can play a good shortstop. He fits literally perfect. And then you have an infield of Hoskins. If he's still here, well, that's a future pod. So do I. Um, my, my hatred for Reese Hoskins is now I'm over it, whatever. Yeah. Um, I, you have a infield of, of, of real Muto Hoskins Stott, you move him the second. He played a really good second base when played Didi an was elite there. level second base. Yeah, when Didi was there, you you slide Stott over to second. You have Trey Turner at short, and you have Alec Bohm at third. And I think Alec Bohm is is only going to get better in the field. Like everyone's gonna gonna go like, oh, Alec Bohm's one of the worst defenders in baseball. Like not really. Like yeah. okay, sure, his stats probably say so, but watching him for 162 games and even in the playoffs, like he was pretty damn good over there. Like he wasn't a liability. And I think having Turner there is only going to help him. And, and like you said, I think whatever he wants, just give it to him. Like mm -hmm. you said, billionaire money isn't real. Really. Just pay the guy what he wants and everyone's going to be happy. And Harper even said, he said the same thing when real Muto was a free agent, that JT was his favorite player. And what did Bryce Harper do? He pandered again. The pander King came back and said, Trey Turner is his favorite player. So, Give Bryce a new toy to play with, and then you have a lineup of Turner, Hoskins, Harper. Harper needs to be batting third. Stop batting him. Clean up. Grow up. He needs a first sitting at bat. Yeah, like I th I texted you like a lineup that was like perfect, but <laughs> but like because you said you'd fucking goo, dude. Oh, I just cursed them. Whatever. I don't care. Now, like they warranted it. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm I'm looking this. I'm looking up this lineup because I know. I know I text you. I'm like, damn, that's a that's a good that's a good lineup right there. Yeah. Hold on. Turner. Tur okay, wait. No. Wait a minute. Spare with me. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I found it. I found it. I found it. I found it. And followed by this picture after I sent it to him. <laughs> so he was actively gooing as I sent him this lineup. So this was my perfect lineup. Is is Turner, Hoskins, Harper, Real Muto, Schwarber, Castellanos, Stott, Bohm, and Marsh. Now, what team has a better one through nine than that? You I mean, it, there's just consistency throughout the lineup. Like you're like all nine of those guys can hit, mm -hmm. and whether uh, they will consistently is, I mean, yeah, and whether they all stay healthy is also a question mark. But um, even then, I trust like Sosa to fill in. I'll trust Veerling to fill in. I trust Nick Maton. A Nick Maton, dude. I love Nick Nick Maton. The guy, the guy's an electric factory. Like, yeah. all right, we get okay. There's ten minutes. We got at least 10 minutes in case. Obviously we record these on zoom. What do you think? I have made a money for God's sakes. I just worked a nine hour shift, dude. I'm, I'm beat right now, but, um, 
So, so it raises the the next question is obviously the Phillies need another starter because as it stands right now, they only have four with Nola Wheeler Suarez and Bailey Falter. I think Bailey Falter earned that job as, as a starter. Um, and I think he's only going to get better, uh, more comfortable. Um, and he's got an off season to work with Cotham to work with whoever to, to really solidify his stuff. Cause he, he was pretty good this year. Like he, I trusted Bailey Falter in a lot of situations. Um, besides the San Diego game, we don't have to talk about that. Um, but you know, do you sign a, a Carlos Rodon? Do you look to trade for somebody? Do you, do you maybe look internally, you know, do, do you try to get painter up here? But even then you're trusting a guy who's never pitched more than like 120 innings. Uh, what, what do you think about the starting pitching market? I think it's, I think it's interesting because it doesn't feel like there's a lot of top flight names out there and the ones that are going to command a lot of money. Exactly. So I obviously think the Phillies are not going to get Jacob DeGrom. I think no. that's pretty clear. Yeah. Um, I, one name I have seen linked to them was Justin Verlander, and I also don't see that happening. I, uh, I don't like the amount of money that he'd want. I mean, it's warranted. He, don't misunderstand he's me. He's 39 but, years old. Like he's yeah. he, he, And the contracts I've seen are like two, three years. I'm not giving a two- or three-year deal no. to a pitcher that is going to be in his 40s by the time his contract is up. Yeah. So uh, I, as much as I think it would benefit the Phillies, I also don't – trust like he's also had a lot of health issues last couple mm-hmm. of years and you know if he comes to the phillies like his arm is just gonna yeah, fall obviously. off like he's not um, allowed. and i think rodon is an interesting one mm-hmm. because he has had the shoulder issues in the past obviously this year that wasn't an issue mm-hmm. um but he has had the issues in the past and he is only 30 years old and he really only started to blossom a couple of years ago mm-hmm. with chicago before struggling like really a lot before that but an interesting note between rodon and turner is they both played together at NC State, which is a really weird quirk. They both create this now, and they both uh, have been tied to the Phillies. Dave. And the only thing with Rodone is if they lose out, if the Mets lose out on the Grom, I think he's probably a favorite to end up in New York. Yeah, and I think at that point, do you only sign Rodone if for nothing else, just so the Mets don't have him? I mean, I think it's. I think it basically comes down to, you know, because another name that's been linked to the Phillies is Xander Bogarts, and this will all come full circle, is would you rather have Trey Turner on on a big deal and, you know, spend not cheaply, but, sp- you know, maybe take some of that money off to to get a, another starter? You know, I was looking at Tyler Anderson. He obviously just signed today with the Angels. Um, you know, sign a guy like that, or do you sign a Xander Bogarts for cheaper? And then maybe get a Carlos Rodon, maybe a Jacob DeGrom. They're not going to get DeGrom, but you get what I'm saying, another high-level starter. Um, I think it's it's something to look into. I think if Middleton is, is serious about winning, you give Trey Turner what he wants. I honestly, like you said, would just sign Carlos Rodon so so the Mets don't have him. You know, mm-hmm. you, I, th- I think if they sign Trey Turner, I think I think we're out on on Carlos Rodon. And I, I think agree. I think that maybe you look at a Chris Bassett, maybe a Taiwan Walker type. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of the Mets, um, but I, I wouldn't be mad at that. Like if you give me Trey Turner and Chris Bassett, like that's 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 upgrades. You know, like I'm not going to be upset with that. You know, I would much rather have a Turner and a guy like like those guys than 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 a Bogarts and, and a Carlos Rodon. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know Xander Bogarts has been linked to the Phillies as well. Where mm-hmm. if they don't get Turner, Bogarts seems like the most likely yeah. kind of filler there. Yeah. Um, and not to not, say that not, that would be exactly. totally disappointing because mm-hmm. he's a great hitter, like one yeah. of the best pure hitters in base. Like he is like the prototypical two hitter to me. Mm-hmm. Like he gets on base consistently as a high average. He has good pop as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but the only thing that concerns me is his glove at shortstop is yeah. not no, as high as a Turner or even a Carlos Correa is. Yeah. Um, and I don't see him honestly sticking at shortstop long no. term. I think he could probably, like, if it was a five-year deal that he got, I'd see him at second base towards the end of that contract. So uh, I would much rather have Trey Turner uh, and just figure out the starting pitching after that. Um, but if you were to get Rodone and, or I keep saying his name, is it Rodon or Rodone? I heard it say both ways. I say Rodon. I have I've heard it said both ways. I'm a stupid baby. I don't know. No, that's but, okay. Um, if, if they do get Xander and Carlos Rodon, I think that that's, a, like, that's an offseason you have to be happy with as a Phillies Absolutely. Fan. 
Um, then obviously getting Rodone and Turner is like a pipe dream. Yeah. Uh, but if you were to get Trey Turner and then get like a guy like Chris Bassett, like you said, I'd be mm-hmm. totally fine with that. Mm-hmm. Anything to upgrade, they need a three starter, a three or four starter. Uh, 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 uh. Ranger Suarez is the three starter. Well, okay. what I'm saying is you can't go into a playoff series with a bullpen game scheduled in every series. Like you just can't do it. It worked until it it worked. I know, it but literally, I, just, like, I, I but it I worked don't the entire. It worked the entire playoffs. Like even the Astros one wasn't a disaster. No, it wasn't. But I still don't want to trust it. Yeah, no, neither do I. And I, I think there's. I mean, obviously, that like we said, this isn't the off season podcast where we break down every person. That's gonna come later, probably a couple weeks. Yeah, because baseball free agency takes the entire four months. That yeah, uh, you know, I gotta think about when because I'm I'm away the first two weeks of December. Well, that's when you know everything's going to happen, too. Absolutely, dude. I'm gonna. I'm bringing my laptop, and I'm going to tell <laughs> Ashlyn. I'm going to go listen. Listen to me. I'm going to have, like, plugged in. It's going to be, like, the most ghetto setup. Yeah. But, like, I got to be like, this This is some grade A stuff right here. I'll text you and be like, Matt, get on the horn. I'm in, I'm in line at Disney. <laughs> I'm at line at Disney right now. Get on the horn right now. Trey we'll Turner just action. signed with the Fightings. <laughs> Dude, if I if I I so help me God, I'm looking at the camera. Trey Turner, if you sign while I'm in Florida, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> I'm gonna be pissed. You know what's gonna happen. You know because that's when the winter meetings are too. Like you know what's gonna. Oh happen. my God. <laughs> you know it's gonna happen then. I'm gonna. I'm. I gotta have a talk with Ashlyn. Be like, babe, are you all right if I bring my stuff? I just. <laughs> I just. I gotta be on top of this, you know, in case in case it breaks down. You know, I gotta be ready, dude. Okay. Um, but I think that's going to wrap it up and, and, you know, I hope, uh, you know, in a couple of weeks we'll maybe, I don't know, maybe next week or something, we'll get like a big off season one talking about all the free agent stuffs, what the Phillies could do and maybe just free agency in general. Uh, I would like to thank you once again, Matt, for, for joining me, buddy. It's always a pleasure having you. Jared, I always love coming on. I really appreciate com- uh, you letting me come on and just letting me spew my thoughts at you. So I appreciate <laughs> let it, it. Let it rip. Uh, Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's going to do it. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. And we'll we'll friggin' catch you in the next one, buckos. Yeah!